me ask you this question. How many times have you seen a scenario like this happening to you? You jump on the chart, right? You have your pending order over here. And then while you're monitoring your price action, you see price coming literally a little away from your entry zone and it goes towards your direction. So I want you guys to think for a second how that made you feel and what were the sort of action you have taken after you've seen such scenarios. I'm pretty sure you can relate to it because that's something that happened to every single one of us, including myself. Yes, exactly. So in this video, I'm going to give you some of the most objective approach that you can use in order for you to do not let your emotion get triggered whenever you're facing these such scenarios. Because this scenario over here is one of the reasons why so many people lose a lot of money when it comes to trading. So let's deep dive into this and try to understand the most important things, which is the differentiation between you as a trader on understanding how you analyze the chart and how you take the trade. So what do I mean by that? Is that whenever it comes to analyzing the chart, the most known and the most common way that anyone is doing it is through fundamentals or technicals, right? So what happens is that, let's say in this scenario, price is going higher and now you see the price is bullish. So based on your technical or your fundamentals, you're expecting price to go higher. What you do next is you try to find out your POI. So if we stick to the previous example, you can see that this week or this zone, anyway, whatever this demand is your POI. Now, when it comes about POI and it comes about you taking the trade, now that you did the whole analysis, we are going to the next important step. What is this step? This step is the risk management, all right? Now, why this is important is because what happened is that when you think from a technical fundamental perspective and you expect price to break above here, retracing and going higher. However, when it comes to risk management, your risk management is fixed. So what do you mean by fixed? Is that if you know from a technical point of view that this has been broken and now price has to go higher, you know subconsciously that price can do something like this and go higher, can do something like this, can go higher, can do anything like this and go higher. However, when it comes about risk management, you have one exact point, which is this one over here. Therefore, your trade should be taken from that specific zone, correct? But what happened if you feel like that price is retracing, let's say 0.1 or 0.2, and then it's starting going higher? And you feel like fear of missing out. You feel like, oh, I know the price is going higher. How many times did that happen? Come on, let's be realistic. It happened to me so many times, right? You see price all the time. Like, like look at this. Just look at this example over here, right? If you're expecting bullishness from this zone and you had this POI over here, right? And then you had this POI over here, but then for whatever reason, you see price rechasing here or here and shooting up, how will you feel it? Wouldn't you feel like you wasted time because you spent, I don't know how many hours or how many minutes in front of the chart knowing that price is gonna go higher, but for whatever reason, price didn't reach your POI and then it shoot it up, right? That, that sense will start making you feel frustrated. You're gonna start feeling frustrated because you're like, I knew where it was going, but I couldn't take it, damn it. So what happened in that case is that whenever you see this, this scenario over here where the price is missing for a little bit, I've seen so many people, including myself, I used to do this mistake a lot, that, ah, oh, you know what, this time I'm taking it. This time I'm taking it. So when you do this, so let's say that your entry is over here, but then for whatever reason, right, you see this price coming so close and you remember to yourself that you missed over here, that you missed over here. Now you feel the trigger of entering in the market immediately. So when you do that, so now we got four pick stop loss. What happened is that this becomes, I can tell you definitely 6.5 or even seven pips, right? Now, there are two things that can happen over here and that's what messes up people's mind. One is that if this plays out, right? And it goes higher, you will be feeling ratified. You will be feeling happy because you'll be like, oh, I did the right decision. You know, I've taken it, I have a TP. If it wasn't for this decision, I would have not taken it and I would have missed another trade. Okay, that's fine, I get it. But the other point of view is that you take it like this and your four pips is no longer four pips, now it's 6.7. So if you will have risked 1% on four pips only, how much do you guys think are you guys are going to lose now on a 6.5 pips? Definitely, definitely it's going to be at least 1.5%. So at that point, what do you guys think happens? 
it triggers other emotions into you. In this case, the negative emotions. Why? Because you feel dumb. You feel literally, oh, I shouldn't have done that. Now nah, I had a stop loss. You know, I shouldn't have made this mistake, blah, blah, blah. And because of this, you start to have a mix of emotions. Okay. So what happened is this. If you miss a trade, you start having fear of FOMO. Right? Sorry, you start having FOMO. What do you mean by FOMO? Fear of missing out. But then if you take this and you hit a stop loss, you feel like, dumb because you're like oh i shouldn't have done that and i'm burning out my account and this i can tell you hands down is one of the main reasons why a lot of people lose a lot of trades so what is it exactly you should be doing okay now i'm going to give you the tips and i'm going to give you i wouldn't say homework but this is something that if you guys start applying on your day-to-day -day trading i can promise you that you're going to see a lot of improvement so what is exactly you should be doing first thing first okay based on your technical analysis once you've done your technical analysis and you, you see that you're actually good at it, you now need to start deep diving and uh, collecting data around your point of interest. So what do you mean by this? Is this, let's say that you're someone that just trades always extreme, like this one, like this one, like this one, okay? By definition, saying extreme itself is telling you what? That your win rate is definitely going to be low, correct? So low win rate if you trade extreme. So knowing that this has a extreme, knowing that this has a low win rate, what exactly is this telling you? That if you start backtesting over a long period of time, you should be trying to understand what exactly is the performance you're getting out every time you're trading this exact POY. Okay. So if you're good at understanding the bias, you have to be also good at understanding how is good your POY that allows you to get the exact type of return you're looking for. Okay, that's very, very important. So that's, in my opinion, is the number one thing you should be doing. So backtest, let's put it like this, backtest your POY. Now, why I'm telling you this is because, let's say, that instead of trading the extreme, you're trading just the decisional. In this case, you can trade this one, right? This is a decisional. In this case, you can trade this one, which is a decisional. You can clearly see the price is coming here and going away, coming here and going away. But then you cannot just trade on this one, right? Because if you do that, then you cannot have this type of risk to reward. So in this case, if we put this one over here, right? You already can see there's a massive difference on this. It's like 11 pips if you take the whole range. But then on the other side, if you take just this, it's again 4.5 pips. Why this is important? Well, because based on the stop loss you're placing, your risk to reward varies a lot, right? You can see here is a 1 to 7. But if you can get the same exact distance, you can see that is a 1 to 2. 0.43 okay so that's extremely extremely important now why i'm telling you to do this why do you guys think is important collecting this data because of course i'm telling you to collect data about what you should be doing the reason why you should be doing this because once you start collecting data back to your point and collecting data so let me write this down next to it right one second collecting data is very important is because once you do that you can understand an average expectation that you can have based on the POI you are marking. Therefore, whenever you see this price coming that close, psychologically, mentally, you are backed up by your data collection and you know that the likelihood of this happening is extremely high because price has not reached the exact level you're looking for because that's the level from where you should be taking the trade. That's it. That's all you need to know. Okay. But if you do not do this exercise and you are not aware of how many times price actually miss out your POI based on your analysis, you will always feel the fear of missing out. Because one of the things that people get really good at when they start trading is understanding bias. Because let's be realistic. It's not that difficult understanding bias if you can even follow some basic YouTube videos, understanding the liquidity, understanding the market structure, even support resistance, whatever you're gonna do it. But then the biggest problem comes when people start missing out trades. Because when they're missing out trades, they start having the fear of missing out. They start you know, making wrong decision and making a big mess with the risk management. But if you train your mind to see data, numbers, and everything, I can promise you over a long-term period, you can build a lot of confidence. So that's point number one. Now this, once you know this, what is the point number two? Let's go to point number two. So on the point number two, what you should be doing, and again, this is very, very important, is that once you know that this is the data you have based on what is actually happening over here, all you gotta do is trying to follow your technical analysis that, that aligns very well with your POY. So what do you mean by this? Is that if I see prices over here and I expect price break into the upside, right? Like this, now I'm looking for bullishness. So I couldn't take a trade over here. I couldn't take a trade over here. Now price breaks again. Now my question to you is this, 
will you take a trade from here? So will you go for a buy over here? Because then what happens is that many people, they'll be like, oh, I'm missing a trade. I'm missing a trade. But when I take the trade, they hit a stop loss. Well, of course, because you don't see the whole picture. So what do you mean by whole picture? If this one over here is my last low, right? Sorry, last high, they made the last low. Whenever price is already reaching the most deepest side of this retracement over here, for me, going by is extremely dangerous. So then what happens is that you feel like, oh, I missed all these three trades, right? Sorry, one second. I missed all these three trades because price didn't give me an entry. But then whenever I'm jumping on the chart, what happens is that I'm missing out the trade. Yes, of course. Or you're hitting a stop loss. Why? Because price has already reached an important supply to the left. Therefore, the likelihood of this playing out is extremely low. Okay, so that's very important is because here is where you need to align your decision making of taking a trade based on the technical understanding you have of the price action. Now, forget about this side, because in this case, you can already see the price has retraced literally 100% of this previous one, right? And regardless, price didn't play out. However, here is playing out. So most likely price can probably break above here right now okay so why this is important again so let me type it over here so you guys can have this written which is uh once again technical with your poy understanding okay so this one over here is very 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 important so if you backtest this i can promise you that you can start noticing this a lot because i see a lot of people that whenever price reaches the extreme uh, supply or demands on to the left what they do they start taking the trade which is something they shouldn't be doing okay it's extremely wrong like why like for example look at this one this is pretty clear look at this this low made this high right you can clearly see there's a break of structure then if you see a smaller time frame here you got this high you got this low you got this high and breaks to the downside now i know many people what they will be doing they will be looking for a sell over here right why because they miss this sell over here they miss this sell over here they miss this sell over here and then the next thing you know they're gonna try to take this sell from this zone and guess what happened they get burned out. Why? Because they're entering exactly in the wrong side of the market. And they don't realize that they have already reached the target, which is the demand to the left over here, which is the most important one, right? That's what I'm trying to explain it to you guys, that you need to know this. Because if you don't know this, and you're taking a trade because you feel like you're missing all the time your opportunities, you're going to get burned out. Like, this is definitely going to happen to you. Now, this being said, let's move to the next point. The next point is the point number three, which is risk to reward uh satisfaction so what do you mean by risk to reward satisfaction okay this one is extremely extremely important why just doing the one above the two one above is not enough for you why is not enough because if you don't have a certain risk appetite like if you don't have something that gives you happiness based on the way you're trading your poy or your technical analysis is not going anywhere so what do you mean by this so let's say this straight again let's say always the same example this one has a nice potential for a one to five based on this POI, based on these stop loss and everything. And you have to ask yourself this question. Do you have an understanding of the technical in order for you to know that one to five is something that you can achieve? Okay, one question. Second question, is this is something that you would be happy with one to five on a regular basis? Is this something that you'd be looking for every single trade you're taking? Because if this is something that you're aiming for, then that's the one you should be sticking to. However, if you say to yourself that look, you know what? I don't care. As long as I make one to two or one to three, let's say one to two, right? Because a lot of people will be like, oh, I'm going to one to three. Then yes, it's fine. There's nothing wrong with that either. But then it doesn't mean that if you take the one to two, you'll never miss a trade. Because the same thing that happened over here in this extreme, it can even happen over here, right? Price can literally come close to your entry point and then shoot to the upside. So now why I'm saying is this is because many people, they rather take the trade and having low risk to reward. And some other people, they rather miss the trade but have high risk to reward. And this is so, 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 so subjective. That's what I'm saying. You need to have a risk to reward satisfaction protocol. And again, this is something that you have to back test based on your understanding of the market and based of the potential you have on you to know how far I can hold a trade. Because making a one to five, okay, maybe for you that you're watching this video, can be simple. But again, for someone else that is watching this video, it might not be simple. Why? Because they, they're they scared that they might be doing one to three and one to two, whatever, and then price goes back to them, okay? And again, this is something that you need to print it literally on your mind, thanks to the data collection, because that gives you the confidence. A lot of people that underestimate a lot the power of back testing, the power of forward testing. But in my opinion, that's how you build confidence. Because more you see something, 
more you'll get to learn that, right? And this applies in anything in life, anything. So that's what I'm saying. It's very, very important that you guys pay attention to that. The next point I want to add onto this few things that I mentioned above is that once you know, now now that you did all of the above, right? I'm pretty sure once you do all this above, I can tell you that you're going to start saying a lot of good results, like especially mindset-wise and confidence-wise. Once you do that, I can promise you that the next step, which is the last one, is going to be the most easiest one for you. And that's where things are going to start clicking for you and change for you. So what is it? It's exactly follow the, sorry, follow the bias, right? And take the next one only. That's it. So what do you mean? Once you are capable of putting all this together, right? I can promise you that these steps is what gonna change your life. So what do you mean? Again, when you see price making this high and low, high and low, and price is not reaching over here, I can promise you that once you grasp this and you see the price is missing out from here, you're gonna say to yourself, you know what? I'm done. I missed that. It's absolutely fine. What I should be doing is this, which is waiting again for price to break to the upside. And then once it broke into the upside, waiting for the replacement to the same exact zone, usually same exact POI, do not change your POI. That's another thing I see a lot of people, oh, this POI doesn't work, that POI doesn't work. No, you do not need to change your POI. You need to stick, follow the bias and take the next one only. What do I mean? Again, follow the structure, follow everything and follow also your POY. So you do take the same POI you have taken here, same POI I have taken here, same POI I have taken over here. Because if you don't do that, and you keep changing POI every single time, the narrative of POI, because you feel like, oh, it didn't trigger before, maybe I need to change that, then I can tell you that you're gonna get burned out. And while you do that, you have to also say to yourself and ask yourself, is this has any potential for me to keep going higher? As I mentioned it on this, point two before what do you mean so in this case for example if you see this they get broken to the upside price is retracing down and then if i see this happening 100 percent, 100 percent, i'm taking this trade same exact thing extreme poi taking the trade and it's the same exact risk reward one to five okay so that's the same protocol you should be applying now i've given you literally step by step four important points that you should be starting practicing. There are, there are a few more others that I'm not adding up now. I'm probably gonna make a part two on this. And the reason why I'm not doing it now, because if you don't start with this four bullet point over here, then it's gonna get very hard for you to next following the others that I'll be willing to share with you guys, okay? But I can promise you, if you do this consistently on a daily basis, and you start seeing results, you start seeing like data, your confidence is gonna go over the moon. And whenever you're facing this situation over here, you'll no longer have any emotional trigger that will make you lose a lot of money. Because let's be realistic, this is something that you faced. And we know it because I faced myself as well. And I messed up so much till I started breaking all of this down one by one and I started seeing results. So this being said, I'll see you to the next one and make sure to watch these videos over here for further understanding of the market structure.